Is it acceptable to wear a hat in a YouTube video? Is it? I wish it was like, who wants to be a millionaire where I could like phone my mates and you can help me out here, Hans? Anyway, I'm still gonna keep it on. So, hello honeys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're just joining me now, then hi, my name's Imogen. If you are new here, then please hit the subscribe button. I'd be so grateful if you join my family of Hans. And also, if you aren't new here, then you know what I'm gonna say, thank you so much for returning. I'm so, so, so grateful. I love you, I love you, I love you. And if you're new, if you're old, if you're anyone, I love you. Any of my Huns, I love you, any Hun. You get it? Anyway, stop. No one's gonna wanna subscribe. This is a new setup today. I'm in my mum's cabin and I just thought it was quite chilled. I'm just on the sofa because we are gonna have a chat today about friendship. Friendships. Basically, I did some story time videos. I'll link them down below on broken friendships. I don't know why I did that because they are definitely broken. Do that again. I did some story times on some broken friendships which are broken <laughs> and a lot of you watched them and I can't believe you did I feel so grateful that anyone watches any of my videos but I got a lot of response about them and let's be honest if you haven't gone through a bad friendship then lucky you hun buns because I've had my fair share of not very nice hun buns I have had my fair share but you know what I think about it there's always a positive from every negative situation so what I want to do today is I wanted to reach out to my huns and ask you to DM me any of your questions I really 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 want to do this as a series on my channel I want to just chat to my huns answer questions so today we're going to do friendship issues but we can do relationship issues we can do anything stomach issues because you know I've got a stomach problem if there's anything you want me to do then please definitely hit the like button because then I know you want me to do these so thank you so much to all my huns that DM'd me because I want to do this as a series if I haven't got around to answering your questions because honestly I could sit here for hours like I would sit here genuinely for three hours but don't think anyone would watch that so I've limited it to 10 questions for this one and then I'll go on and do another one and do another 10 questions if you want to see that so without further ado yes I have written them in a book because we come prepared on this channel yes I am gonna lie back no but I am actually gonna lie back and sit back because it's a chilled video like I just want to talk to my hands and I feel as though it's a really nice thing for us to be able to just talk about friendships and everyone goes through problems with friendships relationships we all go through issues all the time and I feel as though we're so worried to talk about it because what if no one else is experiencing this or what if they judge me and think that I'm being a bad friend because I'm saying this about my friend no we are all in this together. I genuinely believe a problem shared is a problem halved. And I feel as though talking to everyone, and that's why I feel so lucky to be able to make videos like this. I just get to sit here and chat with you. Just quickly before we get into the video, I don't think I'm some kind of like guru or like I think I'm amazing and I'm sitting here going, I know the whole world because I'm only 24. I'm 25 on the 14th of March. If anyone's a birthday twin, then let me know. But it's really close. But I'm just gonna sit here and say from my personal experiences what I would do. I'm probably wrong. If I'm not wrong and I help anyone, then let me know, please, because I love you. I feel so chill just lying back in the sofa. Does it look a bit, it does look a bit like slouchy. Oh well, sit a little bit forward then. Thank you, by the way, to every single person who wrote to me. I love you all so, so, so much. And one day I'll get around to answering all of your questions. So how do you cope with losing friends who were once a big part of your life? This is a big question because I feel as though we always assume that when you're broken hearted from a relationship, that's acceptable. And it's not okay to be broken hearted after a friendship. And I'm gonna tell you from previous experience, you can definitely be broken hearted from a friend. Like when a friend goes from your life, you feel lost, you feel empty, you had someone that was your companion, your confidant, someone that was there for you, someone that knows a lot about you. And you think, how are we not friends anymore? And it makes you sad and you look over photos and you think, what actually happened? And the only way I would say to deal with it is, it's like every advice I can give anyone regarding anything is time. Time, 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 time. There is no time limit on how you feel. There is never gonna be a person that will say, you'll get over it in one week. You might not. You might get over it in a day. You don't know. It's completely solely dependent on the person. And I know what I'm like. I'm a person that when I let a friend into my life, I love them with all my heart. And when I lose that friend or if they hurt me or something like that, it absolutely destroys me. It breaks me because I'm like, I loved you so much and we're not close anymore. It's gonna make me sad now even thinking about it. I'm not gonna cry on an advice video, but you feel really like, oh, clearly we weren't that close because we'd still be best friends now. But the way you have to think about it is, it is like ripping off a plaster. And straight away when you rip that plaster off, you're like, ow, that hurts so much and it's horrible. But over time, I mean, plasters aren't really that much of a great analogy, Imogen, but you understand what I mean. Over time, things get easier because you learn to deal with it. You learn to live with it. And there are things that you can look back in six months and you'll be able to think, oh, I can reflect on that now. When you start feeling better about losing that friend or that relationship, you'll look back and think, right, I can reflect on it now. What can I take from that? Like I look at friendships that broke down in the past and I think, right, I, 
think I was like this with them and I was like this with them, but maybe I need to not look for a friend like that. And then you have signs. Like now I know I wouldn't go for certain signs of friends because I think, right, you remind me of that girl and I'm staying well clear. Do you know what I mean? So you just need to give yourself time. And it's all a part of growing up, unfortunately. We lose people in our lives, we gain people in our lives, and you just have to understand that, unfortunately, that person isn't meant to be in your life because if they were, they'd be your friend now. And if they loved you that much, they'd still be in your life. So you need to know that you weren't actually meant to be friends with them because they weren't good to you and you deserve better. So better is around the corner, angels. Number two, my best friend is flirting with my boyfriend and I don't know what to do. Any advice? Excuse me? Excuse me? Okay, so let me break it down. Best friend is flirting with your boyfriend. I need to know how she's flirting with him because maybe sometimes as girls, we can look at things and be like, is she a flirty person? Is that her as a person? Because I know I'm a very friendly person and people think that's flirting. I would never flirt with someone's boyfriend. But what I'm saying is I'm a very overly friendly person. I'll be really happy and really nice to everyone that I meet. And some people can take that the wrong way. And if she is a flirty person, maybe you need to pull her aside and just say, babe, like I feel uncomfortable when you do that with my boyfriend because I know that's you as a person. I love you for that, but I don't really like it. I feel uncomfortable when it's around my boyfriend. And you can say that. You are well within your rights to say to your friend, I love you and I love who you are as a person and that's you as a person but I don't feel very comfortable and hopefully she's a good friend and she'll understand and she'll be like oh my god babe I really never ever thought I was flirting with your boyfriend hopefully she'll be like that if she's not understanding then you need to analyze your friendship and think really princess you're meant to be my friend you're meant to listen to me if I'm saying to you I think I've seen something and I'm talking to you on a level, you're talking to them in a nice way, then they need to realize, they need to fix up, look sharp, because they need to realize and they need to fix up, look sharp, because if she's flirting with your boyfriend in front of you, mm, 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 Firstly, it's a no-go. Secondly, if she doesn't listen to you and you're actually asking her and telling her how you feel, mm, mm, mm. Thirdly, if it doesn't stop, then I'm sorry, but I won't be taking it. I won't be taking it. I know sometimes we can overanalyze things and we can look at things and think, oh, is she flirting? Isn't she flirting? If it's happening regularly, and you're noticing it. I actually genuinely believe in our own thoughts and we are much more intelligent than we think. Like most of my gut instincts have been right, I just haven't gone with them. So go with your gut. If you think she's flirting with him, you need to talk to her about it. And hopefully if she's a good friend, she'll understand. If she's not a good friend and she doesn't understand them babes, you need to think, she ain't no good. How do you deal with living with toxic people and friends? Oh, I know a bit too much about that because I had some really bad friends that I've lived with. Oh, not even the ones at uni, like they were bad. But I also had my best, best, bestest friend. That isn't my bestest friend anymore, which I definitely want to do a story time on her because yeah, I did a New Year's story time on her, but I never actually explained the whole story, but I lived with her. And best thing I can ever, ever say about living with toxic friends or toxic people is finding your own thing. Finding your own thing, whether that is putting your laptop on, putting your headphones in, and watching YouTube videos all night, and locking yourself in your room. If that is your thing, that's your thing. Whether it's going to a class in the evening to spend as much time physically as possible away from that person, because you don't need that negativity in your life. If they are toxic, they don't need to be in your life. They don't need to be in your aura. They don't need to be in your section. Like, this is my section. No negativity is coming into this section. Like, if you are toxic, I'm sorry, Hans, but I've got a barrier up to it, do you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 no. I've dealt with too many toxic friends in my life, too many toxic people in my life to now. I'm like, do you know what? I'm not having it anymore, and you don't need to have it anymore. So what you need to do is, living around them is so difficult because you can't escape, but you need to find a thing that helps you to escape, whether it's reading a book, whether it's writing down things that they're saying that you don't like. Or like when I used to live with these toxic girls, they used to come into my room and sort of say negative things and try and get me down. I'd write them down in a book and I'd say, right, that's their negativity, it's not mine. They need to own that, don't own their rubbish. Don't own their rubbish. Like if they're coming into you and trying to be toxic and trying to be negative, don't own it. Think to yourself, that's you. You keep living your life, hon, I'll keep living mine. So it really helped me to just write it down in a notepad, the things that they were saying, because then I got to look at it and reflect and think, no, 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 that's you, that's you. Because sometimes in situations we can become really het up and sometimes we can get really emotionally involved with the situation where we become emotionally attached to that person and we think, oh my God, you're toxic, but I can't let you go. You need to find a way of detaching yourself from their rubbish. You can still love them at a distance, but you need to understand that if they are toxic, you need to get as much toxicity, is that even a word? 
I hope it is. You need to eradicate as much toxicity out of your life as possible. That is the biggest advice I can give anyone. If someone is negative, if they are dragging you down, if they're not bringing anything to your friendship or relationship that isn't positive, if they're just constantly dragging on you and take, 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 out. And I know it's so much easier said than done, but it is about slowly detaching yourself, slowly finding different things that will keep your mind busy, keep your mind active and keep your thoughts happy. It is so important. Finding your own things, finding your independence and finding your own strength in yourself to be allowed to be alone, away from these toxic people and think, no, it's them, it's not me. Okay, next one. I'm not the prettiest in my friendship group and everyone always says I'm the ugly one of the group and they never stick up for me. They just smile and laugh. Sorry? Listen, listen. Don't ever put yourself down like that, princess, because you are telling me you're not the prettiest in your friendship group. I guarantee you are beautiful. I guarantee you are beautiful. Please do not compare yourself to five or six other girls and think to yourself, I'm not as pretty as them. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. I bet they compare themselves to other people and think they're not as pretty as other people. You've got to tell yourself you are beautiful every single day because even writing to me then, you say, I'm not the prettiest in the friendship group. You've already owned that you're not the prettiest in the friendship group. Who cares? You don't feel pretty against them, but honestly, you are beautiful in your own individual way. I bet you have so many beautiful traits that they don't have. There are so many parts of me where I'm like, I'm a little bit weird. I talk too much, I'm really over emotional, I'm really loving. And do you know what those things I used to think, are they my downfalls? I actually love them. I love them about myself. And I used to put myself down and think, oh, I talk too much, like stop talking and be a bit more quiet. Or if there was a silence, I'd felt like I needed to fill it because the pressure was on me to talk all the time. There were so many things where I felt like, hmm, I could put myself down here. Now, the traits that I used to put myself down about, I love, I've learned to love them. You are beautiful and every single one of my hands is beautiful inside and out. Like the fact that you even support me and watch my videos, you have a beautiful heart. Like none of you need to do that. You are beautiful and that's how I know you're beautiful because you support me and you support me in ways that I never ever imagined. So going back to the question, these girls not sticking up for you, I'm sorry, but that is really not fair. Like they should have your back. Friends are meant to have each other's backs. Like, if someone said something about my friend in front of me, mm -mm -mm, I would go mad. I'll go ham. I'll go in on that person because I'll be like, listen, I'll go mad. Because no one is talking rubbish about my friend. Like, my best friend, if you come to me and say something bad about her, no. Maybe, princess, firstly, please tell yourself you're beautiful. Secondly, I really want you to look at your friends and maybe I would, what I would suggest is, I would actually suggest sitting them down and saying, I actually really hate it when people say that I'm not the pretty one and they call me the ugly one of the friendship group because it makes me feel really insecure and see how they react. If they react in a soft manner, I mean, friendship groups are difficult anyway because there are so many different dynamics. One person might be softer, one person might be, you know, the colder one. There are so many different dynamics, but I, what I would do is I would approach them and just say, I find it really difficult. And sometimes when you laugh, I think, oh, like I'm struggling to take it in anyway. I would like you to have my back and say to them, you know, I would have your back in that situation and maybe put it on them and say, if you were in my position and everyone was calling you the ugly one, how would you feel? I find that's a really good way of explaining it to people sometimes by making them understand from your point of view. So like saying to them, when I get called ugly, how would you like to be called ugly? Like, how would you like it if people were calling you ugly? Would you expect me to stick up for you or would you expect me to smile and laugh about it? I'm pretty sure it's definitely not the latter. I'm pretty sure people would like you to stick up for them. So make sure you sit them down and speak to them about it because communication is key. Communication is so important in friendships, relationships. If I can't communicate with my friend, I bottle things up and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is bad. Like when I feel comfortable enough to speak to someone and tell them this is exactly how I feel, that's when you know it's a friendship. So if you don't feel comfortable enough to speak to them, then maybe you need to look at your friendship and think, am I friends with them? because they're good friends, or am I friends with them because I've been friends with them for a long time, I don't let go. Sorry, oh, sorry, oh gosh. You need to look at your friendship and think, do I need to reevaluate this? Like, do I need to look at them and think, are they actually good friends? Because good friends wouldn't smile and laugh when people are saying stuff about you. I understand some people don't like confrontation, I understand people don't like to stick up for people because the fear of not being liked, but maybe just sit them down and say to them, I'd prefer if you didn't smile and laugh. I'd prefer if you aren't comfortable enough to stick up for me, then maybe just, don't say anything or don't smile or laugh and then I'll respect that that's the way you are. Because I can understand some people don't want to have a go at people because it's the fear of not being liked and it's the fear of having an argument. But they don't have to smile and laugh. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair at all and I actually feel really bad for you. So I love you and you're beautiful. And you got me. I'll stick up for you. 
I have a friend who is genuinely so rude and pays no mind to other people's feelings, but she doesn't do it on purpose. I don't want to divide our friendship group, so what do I do? See, that's really difficult because we've all been brought up really differently, like as people. So some people just don't understand certain manners. Like some ways I speak to people, some people wouldn't speak to some people like that because they think that maybe it's too over the top. And sometimes people don't even know they're being rude, like you say. So she obviously isn't aware that she's being this certain way with people but maybe you should point it out to her. You don't have to divide the friendship group because the other people in the friendship group, you don't need to involve them. Like you don't need to say, oh, Cindy thinks it and so does Mandy, but Lauren doesn't think it. You don't need to get them involved. I would just say to her, babe, sometimes the way you come across, it can come across a little bit rude. Or if that isn't gonna be the case, if you are around other people, I'd say, listen, she doesn't mean it like that. I would say it like that. I would apologize for her. If she said something rude to someone, I'd say, I'm really sorry. She doesn't really mean that. She just it's just the way she speaks to some people. It doesn't mean that she's being rude, it's just the way she is. I would explain it like that. If you don't feel comfortable enough to say it to her face in a serious manner, sometimes maybe making a joke of it is sometimes a more lighthearted way of getting around it. So just saying like, oh my God, you can't say that, that's so rude. And maybe making it like that and seeing how she reacts. And if she says, oh, I didn't even know it was rude, then say to her, yeah, sometimes like you come across a little bit rude, but I know you're not rude. I know you're not a rude person, but it's just the way you come across because People are all so different that, and that's something I've really learned growing up. Like I always used to think everyone was really loving and really like me, but not everyone has had a really loving upbringing. Not everyone has had a really loving family life. Some people are colder and some people do have certain things that has made them a little bit colder, but that doesn't mean they're a bad person at all. It just means we've all had different backgrounds and all had different upbringings. And I love that. I think it's amazing now. I'm like, I love analyzing people and finding out like, that's why you're like that. And especially with like relationships or something like that, like you can really, really dig deep and find out why that person is like that. And maybe just be a little bit sensitive to her because maybe she's gone through certain things to make her that way. Maybe her parents didn't teach her specific ways of talking to people. Maybe she just thinks that is her being really nice. Like there are certain things that you just have to take into consideration, but I would definitely, definitely, instead of dividing the friendship group by getting everyone else involved, just speak to her directly, I think. I don't know, I'm rubbish at this, probably am I? Am I saying the wrong things? I never know. Okay, next one. How do you deal with a close friend who changes when they get into a relationship? She spends all of her time with him. We've had that, we've all had that, and I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first got into my first relationship, I was that girl. I'll hold my hands up and say humbuns, I was that person. But the one thing I will say is, I'm crossing my arms, I'm a little bit cold. This heat needs to come onto me here. It's on my little feet now. Oh, just keep the camera. But, and I've got an itchy back, I'm rubbish, aren't I? But, the one thing I will say is, let her be for the moment, because that is unfortunately what some of us do when we get into a relationship. We get so head over heels, we get so sprung on that person. We're like, we love them so much. I love them. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with them. And sometimes it doesn't work out. And when it doesn't work out, you need to be there for her. Because as a friend, you support your friend through everything. And even if they make mistakes, you are there to pick up the pieces. And it is difficult because you love your friend and you want to spend as much time as physically possible with them. But when they're head over heels in a relationship, what I would do is I would assess the situation. So let's say they've been with that person for two years. Slightly different because that's not the honeymoon stage anymore. It might be the honeymoon stage, but I mean, if it was the first few months, they're both getting to know each other. They're both wanting to spend every single waking second with each other. So I would give them that space and understand as a friend, okay, it's not right, but it's where she's at. And just be there and be there to be like, listen, when you want to do something, we will do something. And I know it's hard as a friend because it's horrible because you want to be with your friend and you think, oh my God, you've literally ditched me for a boy and you feel hurt. You feel really hurt. I would never do that now. Like my first boyfriend, I did that because he was my first love and it was only for the first couple of months. But then I realized quickly, you need your friends. And hopefully she'll realize that she needs her mates around. She needs her mates around. And the one thing I would say is, Dependent on the time, I would see the time frame. And if she's been with him for a couple of years and she's still being like this, then you need to say, right, listen, I'm not some person you can pick up and drop whenever you need me. Like, if you've had an argument with him, you come running to me, but you don't actually want to spend time with me. You need to say to her, listen, that isn't a friendship. This isn't a one-sided thing. Like, you need to give me as much as I give you. Like, loyalty and love, that's all I want. So really, she should give it back. Like, I treat people how I want to be treated. I would never treat someone badly because I would never want to be treated badly. So I treat my friends with loyalty and respect and love, and that is what they give back to me. But the thing is, if she's not giving that back to you after a long time, then you need to realize 
maybe she isn't being a good friend to you and you need to just sit her down and say listen you really change when you're in a relationship and I love you so much but I miss you I feel as though when you get into a relationship I lose my best friend and you need to say to her you can have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you can also have a friend like there are two very different relationships there's a relationship and then there's a friendship and you're allowed to have both I think some people get so head on with their relationship and they think oh my god this is everything but they need to remember that they need their friends around as well and that's something I really learned very quickly on with my ex-boyfriend so hopefully she'll realise that but I would definitely talk to her about it. Talking is key, talking and being open is key because the more you bottle things up the more it's going to pent up and pent up and pent up inside you and then one day you're going to explode and you're going to go oh my god you never ever speak to me, you never ever see me, you're always with your boyfriend so it's much better if you just talk about it, learn that from past experience, be open, be open and honest. Okay next one, hot buzz. Do you find it, I hope you like this video. I really do hope you like this video. Is it a bit random? I feel like it's just nice to just sit here with my hum buns and just chat. Okay, next one. Do you find it hard to trust people when going into a new friendship or relationship because of your past? Ah, oh, I'd like to say yes, in a way, because I'd like to think that my walls are built up so strong because of what I've been through that I would never let anyone horrible into my life again, but unfortunately, I am human and when I meet someone friendship wise, relationship wise, if I fall for them or if I love them as a friend, you can only put your barriers up for so long, can't you? I know I'm a much better judge of character now. So the one thing I will say I've taken from my past is that I think I look at people differently. Yeah, I probably do. But that's because the more experiences you go through, the more it makes you aware of things. And I think to myself now, I don't judge people by everyone else's standards. I don't think everyone's going to hurt me and everyone's going to be disloyal and everyone's going to cheat and everyone's going to do these things. But I see signs now and I'm like, no, 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 you're not in my life. And I can cut them out like that because I think to myself, I don't want to go down two years down the line, be best friends with someone and then them go, see ya and really hurt me. I like to think that my past has helped shape me into a stronger person, but I wouldn't say it's made me bitter. I don't look at people and think the same of everyone. Like I don't look at men and think they're all gonna mess me around and they're all gonna be rubbish and they're all gonna be weak. I don't think of it like that. I've had bad experiences with boys, but it doesn't make me think every boy's gonna be like that because I look at certain men I know and I'm thinking, I'm gonna find one like you one day, I promise. I do think that you need to grow from your past experiences. Don't let it make you bitter. Don't be bitter, be better. Take your past experiences and think, right, I had a friend that really used me and had a friend that was really, really cold and wasn't loving at all to me and wasn't loyal. Well, sweet, you know that you don't want that in a friendship anymore. So go into the next friendship and see those signs. And if you see those signs, just think, right, I've had time trying to be friends with someone like that and it's just not for me. So then you can realize that. I try to trust people as much as I can. If they mess me about and let me down, then I'm like, okay, fine, I'm out, I'm out. But you need to give, you need to give people trust because until they give you a reason not to trust them, you have to trust them, don't you, really? I think you do, babes, yeah. You do, angels. How do you know if a friend is fake? Wah, 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 wah. If I could tell which friend is fake, I would love it. Like, if you have new friends into your life, I wish I had a beeper that just went, no, she's fake. Do you know what I mean? I wish I had that. But unfortunately, we don't have that. So the only thing I can say to you is, like my previous answer, is take past experiences and see that as signs for the future. If you think someone's using you, go with your gut. Like, our guts, trust your gut trust your gut hands because i've told myself so many things sometimes and then been like why didn't you listen to your gut why didn't you listen to your gut if you've had a friend that messed you around think to yourself right what were the traits of that friend and then when you go into your next friendship you can see those traits and see those signals and see those signs and think oh fake friend fake friend unfortunately you're gonna get hurt. Unfortunately, you're gonna get hurt by friends. You're gonna get hurt by relationships. That is part of life and you can protect yourself for the rest of your life, but you'll end up really lonely because you'll shut everyone out. So what you need to do is trust people until they give you a reason not to, but be slightly guarded. Keep your guard up and be a little bit more clever because looking back on the person I used to be, I was very naive and I'd let anyone in and I'd be like, oh, everyone's so nice. And then when they hurt you, you feel like you've literally been dropped like a sack of spuds, a lead balloon, you're like, oh my god, I never thought they'd do this to me. So now I'm just a little bit more clever. It comes with time, and I think it comes with growing up and you think, I'm actually gonna note this now. I'm gonna note this down and think, right, I'm definitely not gonna go for that person again because Jesus Lord, oh god, I don't want that situation happening again. How do you deal with friends if you feel like they aren't supporting you? Princess Pi, 
your friends should be supporting you. If your friends aren't supporting you, then don't go hard. Don't go hard. That's one thing I've learned. Sometimes our emotions build us up and then we just go, I don't think you're supporting me as much as I, uh, do you know what I mean? Like we do that, we do that. We really go hard. But sometimes I think the best way is to take a step back from the situation and then think, right, how am I gonna talk to them without seeming like I'm on the back foot? Because there is a different way of approaching people because you can instantly get someone's back up if you start shouting. So the best way is just sitting them down. If you don't feel comfortable sitting them down, text them and just say, babe, like, I love you so much and you're my best friend, but I just feel as though I give you a lot more support than you give me and I'm going through something at the moment and I'm just gonna be honest, I really need you, I need you. And you know what? Their reaction tells you everything about them as a friend. If they react in a bad way, then I'm sorry, but you don't need that friend in your life. And I know a lot of people say that it's easier said than done, and it really is. Like I can say to you, cut that friend out now, but you can say, I love that friend, and I don't wanna be left without that friend, but that friend isn't a good friend. So why would you wanna have a negative person in your life who doesn't support you? You deserve the world around you. You deserve to be surrounded with people that love as much as you do. You deserve the love you give to everyone, and you deserve that. So tell yourself you deserve that, and think to yourself, I don't mind being friends with myself. That is one part of me that I wish I could have changed when I was younger. I don't wish I could change it, but I wish I could go back and say to my younger self, babe, it's okay, you don't need those friends. You can be friends with yourself. Like, I think I was so worried about being friends with everyone and having friends that I was friends with people that weren't good and weren't great to me because I was so needy of them. And actually, now I think to myself, I'm all right with being friends with myself. Like, I'm so lucky I have all of you as friends, so I will never, ever, ever feel lonely. But before YouTube, I was very much a lonely person. I used to go for dinner on my own. I used to go for cinema on my own. And that's one thing that being in hospital taught me. Being alone is actually really nice and it's not a scary thing. We make it out to seem like, oh my God, you've got no friends. So what? If I've got friends around me, they're good friends and you'll know it. If I don't have friends around me, then at the moment, I haven't found a good solid friend. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have two solid best friends I see all the time and that's enough for me. Like I have all of you and I'm so grateful, but I don't feel like I need anyone. And that is something that you need to grow and learn with as a person on your own. And then you won't feel like you need anyone else to support you. And then you'll feel like if that friend isn't supporting you and she's being a rubbish friend, you can go, okay, see you later, mate. Bye. I don't need you anymore. Take time out to really get to know yourself. Spend some time with yourself in situations where you don't feel comfortable. Going to the shops on your own. Going to the cinema on your own. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. I promise you, you'll actually feel so amazing for it. It takes time. It takes time. It took me 24 years to get to where I am. It took me 24 years to to be comfortable in my own skin. It took me 24 years to actually be able to walk out and not think everyone's staring at me and being bitchy about me, excuse my language. But I used to honestly think everyone was staring at me and slagging me off because I was so insecure. And now I'm like, stare all you want, I'm vlogging, I'm talking to my huns, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so just put yourself out of your comfort zone and just realize that if she isn't being a supportive friend and she doesn't take your advice on, then you don't need that friend in your life, babe. You really don't. You really, really, really don't. Number 10, how do you manage a controlling friend? This is hard. If you're asking this question, Princess Pi, you know she's controlling. Because sometimes we can be controlled by a friend, but we don't really know we're being controlled by them until we take a step back. So it's really good that you're at this point where you can see she's controlling you. Try to distance yourself, if I'm honest. You might love that friend so much, but someone in your life that's controlling you isn't healthy. Being controlled is not a healthy thing. You need to live your life and be free and be the person you are. You should be being told what to do or being told what to say or be like you need to be your own individual person so if i'm honest i would slowly distance and wean yourself off and if you feel like you're going to be lonely think about what i said last time and just think right i can be on my own i can and when you're meant to meet good friends you'll meet good friends the more happy you are alone the more you attract positive people in your life because i think to myself if someone negative comes in my life i think well i don't need you i'm happy on my own so if you are negative see you later and you will get to that point. It's just about time. It's about growing. It's about learning who you are as a person. So yeah, I really hope you like this video. I know it's been chilled, but it's really nice to just sit here and talk with you. I think it might be too chilled. It may be, I don't know. But if you do like it, please give it a massive thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and join my family because I love doing videos like this. I love just talking about things because we all go through issues with friends, relationships. I'll definitely do more friendship issue videos if you want. I've got more story times coming your way, I promise angels. And also relationship issue videos. I love doing videos like this because if I can help anyone with any advice that helped me, then I would feel so grateful in my life. Like if I can share any advice that I feel as though has helped me grow as a person, it helps any of you, then I really, really, really like want to pat myself on the back and I feel so happy and content as a person because I just want to help other people realize that 
we all are not alone and we can all talk about our issues together so yeah i hope you like this video angels oh it's so cute i just love sitting here with my humbug let me do this then so basically if you are new here i play this song game where i mime a song and you just gotta guess the song that i'm mam and so So my two shout outs this week go to Vicky Armstrong and Carrie Mitchell. I love you both so much. Thank you for being Hans. Thank you for supporting me. If you're watching this video now, I hope you see your shout out. Thanks so much for even watching this video. I don't know whether anyone's liked it or not. Probably not. But anyway, I love you all with all my heart. And until next time, I'm gonna love you. And I'm gonna leave you. I've got a little bit of a cold. Can you hear it in my throat and my voice? Has that been annoying? I really hope you like this video, Angels, because I really want to do more of them. Because it's just nice sitting down with my best friend. I love you. Can you see that? It's cold in here. Oh, stop. I love you, bye.